The handout and these slides and some additional materials are all on our website. And this speech was originally, I gave it a couple months ago to ACC, Association for Corporate Counsel, which is one of the largest in-house groups of attorneys in the world. I think there are about 45,000 members. I gave it to our local chapter. Well, I came up with this idea because I've been working with clients, and it's kind of a, when you look at it, it's a very dry topic in a way. You say virtual data rooms, what does that have to do with family businesses, or, you know, do I go to sleep now, or what, what does this all mean? What it means is getting your, your clients' information either on their own extranet, your law firm's extranet, your, your, your an outside vendor or, or an investment banker, whoever you are, you get their materials all together in the, I keep looking at our social media person, but you get them into the modern age, how do you find files? I mean, when I first started practicing law, I had lots of cabinets of files. I think I'm now allocated only two drawers outside my office, that's it. The thing is, I don't really print out much. I, mean, I don't keep, I print a lot. I print a lot. <laughs> um, but I don't keep the paper anymore. And if you don't have all your documents for your clients electronically or your client doesn't have them in a data room well organized, how do you manage you know, your, your client, i.e., how do you know that they actually you know, have consistency of their documents, you know, what do they got, what are the signatures that we historically, we're talking right before this, um, got up here and one of, one of the people in the audience said, oh, well, we need to do this not just for M&A deals. And the answer is absolutely. This is running your company and it's pretty basic. Now, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that does happen is this kind of comment, you know, someone walks in Friday and says, hey, we're gonna do a deal and we're going to the market and we have to hit the market now. It could be a private deal, whatever it is. And you go, people expect that you have all your documents together. It's no longer acceptable to say, well, we'll dig out the files from warehouse or where are they? And where are this? And try this one out. Where are the signatures? You know, people close deals and they do it electronically and you can't find, I mean, one of the great mistakes out there now is the old fashioned closing book. People don't, clients don't want to pay for it. It is the best investment to get that closing book with the signature. Now it can be electronic, not a paper copy, but you got to have it. One of the co-presenters um, on the panel when I gave this, um, you know, said they had to go out with like, I think it was a couple billion dollars and they were told on a Friday and they funded, you know, the end of the next week. I mean, the time, the, it's just, that's just crazy. And they did it. The old days, file cabinets, um, you know, that's what we had. Then we had, you know, I'm not, I'm not even sure I know where the fax machine is anymore in my office. I mean, it's all PDF. Uh, for us, and then you know, here you know the trucks. I mean, emails and all that stuff is really the way it is now. I mean, like it or not, I get dropped on my in my inbox a 50-page agreement, and the client says we're going to have a conversation to go over that in an hour, and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've gotten kind of, I, I, I just, I've gotten to the point. I've got at first I was like, okay, I got to do this. I'm like, I, I don't know about you guys, I can't process that fast. <laughs> um, but here's the virtual data room. And by the way, when you create it, like almost all organizations that have some size to it now that are law firms have the ability to do an extranet or provide it to their clients. Really, basically, I would suggest you do it for free because you, you, you create the basic room for it. Now, we, we created ours about six years ago, and now we're in the process of completely redoing it. If any of you got a uh, extra net that's more than four years old, the industry has completely changed. You need to get new software. I mean, it's, it is completely different now. Um, and we're not here to compete with the Merle Corps or those. You know, we're talking about getting the information like a filing cabinet. And the other thing that we think the trend is going to be, this is no longer optional. In other words, clients are going to want direct access to your files in a real-time basis in the long run. You know, they, you, you got, we, you know, we do our document management system within the firm. 
clients are going to require that they get to pull up your their word document. I mean, it's just that's the way it's going to be, and they're going to require this of you. This was on the cover of the Post recently. Was the Washington Post. Right. Same people though that predicted Hillary was going to win. Um, but you know, cybersecurity and hacking. This is a, also a concern. So we we get all this stuff in a nice data room, and then it gets hacked. I mean obvious comment, you've got to watch out for what's going on and who has access to this data. So you know, one of the downsides is you gather it all up, now everybody's got it and someone copies it. But the, the issue is that's the way it is. Now from a compliance and consistency, if you have all your, let's say your, your company has 50 major contracts, having them all in one place where people can see it and what the provisions are, it really is a matter of Getting, you know, not that you want to always be consistent, but knowing what you got, you know, from a compliance point of view. If it's in a file cabinet, how do you know what the final contract is? I mean, it's kind of basic, but that's what the data rooms will allow you. Um, you know, these are some of the questions. And, and I'm going to get a, try to get us back on time, so I'm going to go through this pretty quick, I think. But. Um, you know, who has access, who, this is the big one, you know, maintaining. You know, you, you do a data room and then nobody maintains it and who's in charge. And even down to the basics of, you know, I would suggest, you know, having somewhere in there like the org chart of the company, their phone numbers are the key principles. I put this in that top 10 list. I think that's one of them in the top 10. But, you know, someone calls. How long does it take you to find out, you know, who does what for what client? You know, or what, what, you know, that costs you time and effort. So if you have it ahead of time, it's, it really does help. Um, this explains a little bit of what we've already talked about, but this is one of the big pushes is legal compliance and consistency and, you know, having the information at your, at your fingertip. And, and for family businesses, I think, especially kind of the, the small, like the company between 10 and 50, you know, employees, the smaller family business. If you, you know, ask them, uh, I'd like a copy of all your material contracts. Good luck. Go back to your own law firm um, and say, where are, where are the top 50 contracts for your law firm? And I pay all sizes of the law firms, good luck finding those contracts. And, and we're lawyers. <laughs> we're like, it's like the person that dies without the, you know, as a trusted state lawyer, doesn't have their will. I have a question for you, Michael. I'll just think about this. So, as we all go to the cloud, everything's going to the cloud. Is this basically, do you think this is the future for everything, for all information, for all organizations like law firms, et cetera, that keep everything on the cloud? Everything will be on the cloud, and it will be, you'll have private clouds, like for, for a while, or, or you'll buy your own private space on that cloud. Um, most you know, the internet is big, okay, obviously, but what doesn't get talked a, a lot about is actually most of the information is still behind firewalls. You know, like, no, the firewalls, you can't get to. Private information, like, all our documents are, you know, you can't get our documents, like, you know, on the internet, but I can, I mean, it's my, it's my partner, but same goes for each of your organization. So a lot of this, the internet's huge, but a lot of the real information, what I call other information, is behind these private clouds. And one of the things that's happening, and this was unexpected, I, I'm a big believer in owning your own hard drives, your, your, your drives, the, your data. If you, if you offload this to one of the big providers for free, they're mining your data and selling it. So how do I explain to Peter, if Peter's a client of mine, oh, by the way, we did that confidential deal, but uh, such and such search engine is um, mining all your information that was confidential. I don't think you'd like it. So how do you secure the data in the future? I mean, not only secure it from people mining it, but securing it from hackers. Uh, it is a battle. And, you know, you know the cybersecurity people say everybody's been hacked. Everybody. And if you think you haven't, then you, you need to get a new test. But, I was in that uh, business before we sold it, the backup and recovery uh, business, and uh, 
you know, ev as you say, everybody's been hacked. Everybody will be hacked in some fashion. And you can't protect everything. You just have to decide what is important to you and protect that because it's impossible to protect everything. It's impossible. And, 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 if, and, if, and frankly, and here I am, like, you know, get it on, get it in this virtual room. If there is a contract that, like, let's just say, is really top secret, you don't let it, it, it be accessed from outside your office building. You also might decide that in the data room it says, this is in the vault, go see such and such. I mean, don't put it on the system. I mean, if it's, if it's super sensitive. It's an argument for analog. Yes. So, you know, when we had our M&A transaction, we, I used the data room for the first time five years ago. And I mean, it just made everything so easy. It's so much easier. The yeah. only thing that you can't protect is the other side or whoever has access to the data. I mean, you can do it by agreement, but you know, you have to prove that somebody leaked the data. Well, what you do is if want secret information, whatever you start putting codes and log in and the, the software can get very, con right. like, you know, I don't, believe our software that we're replacing will have all the functions like you know you know they've got the, the systems have gotten so sophisticated they can tell you exactly how long you were on what page you could put a better watermark on every single person what they do it's just yeah. a matter of which level and our firm we're not trying to be at the, the very top I mean of that it costs too much I mean you, you gotta you know pay someone to go do that work but we're you know, our target is getting our information on there and managing the client for their, their, their you know, for any kind of deal, financing, anything, and just regular corporate governance. Um, you know, a lot of this is just 24 hour access by seven, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll pick on the text messaging. The, the big feature that we want that uh, for the new software was that it's accessible on your iPhone or, or other portable device. I mean, you know, lawyers in general, we've been like, no, you gotta have a PC, you gotta, or whatever, you know, to get access. It's, you know, like it or not, having my phone and pulling up documents is critical. What's that app, Michael, that does that? Well, we're, we're gonna have a, a specific vendor that we're using, so uh, that'll be part of our data room. But are, they, are there vendors that absolutely specialize in law firms? Yes. Yeah. There's. We came down to two providers um, that we got it down to, and they specialize in law firms. And this is, I mean, I, just the way it is. I, I don't know. I, I'm not here. What? By the way, I'm not entirely kind of you know like the cyber attack. Like, I'm worried about that. But the reality is, this is where the industry's going. You know, the ability to search the data, your stickiness with your clients, you're providing a service. I mean, the, the sad thing is you've got to buy all this stuff, you put it in, the client can actually look it up without even calling you and, you, you know, we work on the hourly rate. But at the end of the day, once again, this is reality. I think if you don't provide it, you're behind the times. They may look at it, but they still, you know. They can't understand it. You know, they need our help. That's right. <laughs> One, the guy, the guy that I, I co he's a former general count, general counsel for EY. He was there. He was a white case lawyer, and then he was there for 24 years. And he, he's actually he'll never retire. He's in the he's like early 70s. He's a big advocate. He and I met, have worked together on a lot of things. He and I independently both believe this is critical management of your of, of any organization because. He's like, this is doing an audit. You know, this is compliance. This is getting all your information. And, and these contracts, some of them, you know, they still need our help. I mean, you know, it, in some ways, I believe that actually, I'll, I'll use his words. He's like, when you first do this, the work for the client spikes up because they go, they have a holy moment of going, oh my God, these things aren't done with. They've, right. they've got a whole, back of their mind full of things that they've been worried about but they just haven't gotten to raising the issues about. And uh, so I, I think you're right, you're totally right. You know, in terms of loading, of, of just get a, a really good due diligence list and use that to, to load things in and 
as you get it, you, you know, you'll get a lot of work. You get a lot of work, and then once it gets there, and you'll understand the client better. This is no different than the '86 Tax Simplification Act. Yeah. Really, yeah. because oh, it, nobody well, well, it knows was, the case law except the attorney. And one of the things is, you know, and this goes to the vendors. Clients are looking at even some of the major ones. Like I'll just give you an example. There's now standards for keeping data, and this is one. Even though I like to own my own drives. You might actually have to outsource it for the, those who still own it. Not because we don't want it to go off to somebody else's data or, or, or private sector you know, service company. We may actually have to because the certifications now are expensive. So if you want to comply with XYO, you know, whatever the, the standards are, it might cost 500000 to get that certification. Well, and then you, you got to maintain it. We're, even the biggest law firms are going to have problems with that in terms of you know, maintaining that, that information or, or level of security. And one of the big vendors, um, we, one of our defense contractors that we in DC, they were like, they couldn't use the number one vendor for, for doing a data room, or I, I consider one of the number one, because they have a 24-hour hotline they have, would have the first eight hours in the United States, the next one would be, I think, in England, and then the next one would be in Australia, both security clearances. It was top secret information, even though they're allies. <laughs> um, the, the requirements of their business was they, they couldn't have anybody see their data or even answer the question, so that vendor couldn't get it. Slightly different version of this is out um, for families called Trusted Family which allows you, a family to have an encrypted website that's only for their family, and they can wall off, you know, there's a governance group, they can wall that off, but it also operates as a communication tool between family members. Exactly, and, and I think this is, this is where it's going, um, and, and I think that you gotta do it. And, and then, you know, and again, also knowing what the level of access is, and, and putting someone in charge of it. I mean, I still believe, you know, don't have, I would recommend, you don't have 20 people in charge. Like, what I do is I have one person, you know, load the data room, and they go, well, what, Michael, you're, you're good at technology, why don't you do it? I said, no, I want one person to know what's going on and to be responsible. You know, what are the dangers, you know, here are some of the, the, the hit points, but you know, some you know, getting all the information in one place, you get hacked. That that's a problem. You know, I would have, but I, I am a believer of having different levels of protection, and you got to remember who you gave the passwords to, and not share passwords, and just it's basic, but it, it is violated on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. And you got to change them if someone leaves. Exactly, someone leaves. And by the way, anybody who had, had waiting for the software to be developed, and it, I, I have not found it anywhere, um, and, but we need it. Why do we not have a software program that says person X or hack, the, not just the hacking, but they start downloading a gig of information off your server? Why is there not a red flag that goes up when someone starts pulling large amount of data? I have not found any vendor. I've talked to some software guy. I think you make a business out of that program because, okay, you know, let's say the red flag goes when you take, you know, a hundred. You know, we have something because I've, as as a manager, I've been alerted by our IT group when it starts downloading. When IT when when associates are taking hundreds of documents off our ser server, then I get I get an alert because that's a sign that they're leaving. Can you send me the name? Could be yeah. custom. I'll find out. I'll find yeah, but out. It, but this is a, it, it, it's gonna, ha it's, I'm glad, I, I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, it's like, if someone, you know, steals five documents, I'm not, you know, you know, shock, you know, it happens, or it happened. But all of a sudden, if someone do is downloading, you know, 50,000 documents, well, why isn't there a red flag? I mean, you know, cut it off. Um, we call this, you know, 
consider a vendor IT audit well in advance. You know, the clients are starting to say, you know, what is what are your standards and can you meet these standards? And you'd be shocked at a number of major firms that cannot withstand that audit. Um, just you, you, you assume I'll, I'll pick on the branding. <laughs> you know, you think they got this brand and they do, you know, they're fantastic lawyers, but some firms just haven't invested, you know, in their technology. And then you can have a small firm that has great technology, you assume they don't. It's just, you get the point. You know, what do you put on it? Um, we start, I start with clients, basically I took my, my M&A deal, to, you know, the due diligence list and gave it to them. I, you know, it said, uh, these are all the contracts. And it was, it's really kind of fascinating watching how it works, and, and let's say I want to do a financing. If I'm going to somebody and I show that I'm extremely well organized and everything's there, I get better, the client gets better rates. I mean, it's just, if I came to you, Dan, if you're the lender, and I said, well, I don't know where all my stuff is, or, I, or, I, or oh, by the way, I forgot these six contracts. You, you think he's now comfortable, like, you know, with the business, the answer is no. And people are getting more demanding. The old days, you had more forgiveness. Today, I, I think it's, there's not the forgiveness mm -hmm. factor. Yeah, if you say, oh, I forgot this document, they think you sandbagged them. All this is on the, the, uh, the will be on the website, or it is already up there, but you know, Always remember, information is power, um, and we, you know there are people in family businesses. They don't want anybody else to know their contracts. So that one of the pushbacks you get is, I don't want them. To know. You know, for Affy, for example, one of the first things I did when I became president was we put all our minutes. We have minutes. We publish them. All the financials. I've gone over our reserves, and you know, and I've, I've had comments like, "Michael, don't you know if you tell everybody you got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank now for Appy, which we do, we're, we're at a, a given moment in time, but we have a reserve now." And when I became president, we had a John Dadicus had to write a check for four thousand dollars because we had no money. But one of the questions was. <laughs> You know, when you get that, when you put out that type of information, someone says, well, we should just reduce dues or we should do this. No, I want to continue to have it, but that is a, you know, it's one of the issues. Why, why do you need 100 grand? You know, why, you know what's magic about it? Is, should it be 50? We should just, you know, reduce the cost for everybody to, to attend, or why should it be 200? But that's, that's the debate that happens when this information starts. I'm all for it. I think that's the way. That's I think it's a better way to run a business uh, to get the information out. Um, period. Like um, a question for you. Do, so, are we using a virtual data room for AFI? In essence, what we've done is in the member section, all our materials are, are basically on, up there. Um, I think the only thing that is not in that data room is actually the contract with, um, with uh, Drew's organization, because I feel that that's a confidential document. Now, what we pay them is actually in the minutes and, and our financial statements, but I just, we just haven't <laughs> posted that contract. I know, <laughs> it, maybe we should put it up there, but we haven't, it's, that's probably the only doc, but we did fully disclose the material terms of that contract. Um, is there and, we, and I also don't think maybe we should put on uh, and I didn't put the FFI contract we have a contract but everything else about uh, AFI is in that member section I believe is that right Drew? Okay. Yeah so and Drew I think Drew keeps it all in our in his in a database as well um, these are some of the sources um, <clears throat> you know there are free free ones out there um, they work well, but you know, for anything confidential, I can tell you, stay away from the free ones. Uh, they're mining your data. It's like, you know, why is Facebook free? They're mining and selling it, your information, and 
it's out there and you're worth every customer is worth something that they're, they're selling the print screen on your on your device and by the way to freak out what we just had a presentation from one of the um, ad companies where they are now they know this device they're not even really interested per se in me per se they watch this screen it's got its it's got its EIN number they are mining this with say this device belongs to an attorney who makes X he's this he's you know he's X you know Y age and they're keeping track of when the ad now runs you know on my device and that at one level it's great because you can target that person that you want to get the bad news is it's like they, they track me it's like once I stay at one hotel it's like why does that hotel keep popping up well because they know the device went to that hotel <laughs> <laughs> and this is accelerating um, <coughs> a little different than but all right, that. the here are some of the things I just and this is I'm not going to go through all all these items right now but I figured this might be a good thing for for the members to have in terms of these were some of the key things like mobility or you know, no, you know notifications just what do you have and I, I, I give a war story right now on a, a deal uh, just worked on a deal and we had a very contentious very wealthy a billionaire that was the minority investor and he the client was selling their business gave the term sheet to the billionaire the billionaire said <coughs> approved okay four months later getting close to closing the in-house general counsel said we don't like this deal <laughs> like the money <laughs> got kind of basic right and the client we talked to the client and we said this deal had been kicking around for you know four months and the billionaire the, the general counsel said he never saw the contract you know the term sheet client pulled up the log <laughs> said we knew exactly how long they spent on each page of the four page term sheet we printed it out sent it to the general counsel and told them what to do with that information and that and then then he said well the client can't understand this <laughs> and I, so i read the first slide we were fighting over money the purchase price is blank millions of dollars period i said he spent 50 seconds on that page on that sentence <laughs> I think he got it we, by the way we got we won the, the deal point I mean all the other points started fall I mean it was like he just capitulated because frankly we kind of embarrassed him but he had the yeah, evidence we had the evidence and, and you know I'm just a corporate lawyer I felt like I was doing a trial <laughs> <laughs> so there you go um, these were these are actually the two vendors that we had. You know, just compare them. Question, Michael. You said you give your clients a due diligence list for documents to collect and put up. Do you also put them into a file structure when they go in, saying like organizational yes. documents here? Yes. You do. Okay. And that's critical is to to get those structures um, set up and where they go. And it gets kind of hard because you could you could say, well, I want all material contracts, but I want the real estate over here. You can end up with links. You can end up with some duplication, uh, but the answer is yes. Do you customize it? Yes. Okay. All of it's got to be customized. Actually, I believe. I mean, fundamentally, I, I've never met really any clients that are the same. You know, I always think. I always think. Oh, there's, there's a standard deal or a standard. You know, as long as people are involved, they're, they're all different. Uh, but there's basics. You know, there, you know, ninety percent of it's basic, but then other parts. Um, this was this is kind of always interesting you know like does it expire kind of like managing passwords you know if if you make it perpetual and you forget that someone got one <laughs> it's kind of nice actually for it to actually just expire and you have to renew it it's a pain in the neck because I can't remember any of my passwords um, but there you go but this might give you and these are some of the vendors out there um, <coughs> um, that are you know, you know, so you guys would have some names um, of some of them. You know, and, I, and I just put law firms on A just because other, and it could be other third party. People provide this all the time. 
one of the things I will warn you on, like these engagement letters from investment bankers, they love to do the data room for our, our clients. And then when we say, give us a copy of the data room, they won't do it. Um, because it becomes their proprietary information. So, you know, just FYI, those contracts, I mean, are getting, it never ceases to amaze me. Every time I read one, they push something over the top that I had never thought anybody would demand or ask for. I mean, I just sent out one. I mean, they're just over the top. You gotta be careful. If you ever get an engagement letter from a banker, they're, they're getting, a, it's like warning clients, don't sign a term sheet before you talk to us because you don't know what all the terms mean. These engagement letters are getting very aggressive um, from the investment bankers. In terms Why is that, Michael? Because I think they're afraid of being, one, they get afraid of being sued. So like indemnification is very broad, but and they, they've gotten stiff on some fee. You know, somebody came up with a clever idea that, hey, I sold the business. I didn't really sell it, I leased it, so I didn't sell it. And the banker did all the work. This is in defense of the banker. You know, I did all the work, I'm the banker, I need to get paid. And you're telling me because I, you didn't sell it, you leased it all, I don't get my fee, but it was the equivalent of a sale. That's, and it, that's not fair to the banker. But these things then create documents and things that they grab for that has unintended consequences um, that are broader, like, you know, explain to a client um, your routine debt now that you refinance every couple, of, the banker gets a fee on. What? That, well, it says any debt. It was meant to capture a transactional debt, but not a routine debt. You got to carve these things out, and that's called the Trojan Horse Clause, right? Well, it's <laughs> I'm just, it's just a, a warning. I mean, they're getting they're getting more aggressive. At least the last ones I've had. Well, and they're not they're not as good as as these guys either. No. They don't have the features, and and they convince the client you want to use them because it's a free service, but it's free because it's not worth much. Right. And, and I would say, you know, if you get really into real sophisticated deals, you know, I, I mean, I, I've used Merle, you know, quite a bit. They do a really good job, and their system is one of the best out there, and it has functions that my firm doesn't provide, nor will we provide. Um, that's my warning, the data mining and privacy issues. Be aware, you know, keep, keep a disk with the materials, you know, keep, what was reviewed, this is kind of the example I was just giving about the, the, the one deal. Um, I'm gonna go through this quickly. Uh, on the, I, I got a disclaimer in the material, so if you're looking for a disclaimer, you need to have the, the disclaimer, period. You gotta have that disclaimer on the, your data room. And if you don't, you're, you're opening yourself up for certain liabilities. Folders, kind of the comment. Um, this is the model rule for, you know, for competency, and we're, and you can even tell in this mid-year conference, we're, we're once again hitting some of the technology issues, and our, my view of it is, not knowing technology, you're probably tripping on this rule now, for malpractice or other things, if you're not doing it or explaining to your client the risk involved. Um, this is a case, I'm not going to go over, we, 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 we extreme detail, actually this is one, um, Mike, I think it was about a year ago, we, was kind of the fundamentals, the con, the con case, you know, just procedures and who's got what, you know, information, all of this is kind of a back, part of this case in terms of when you're trying to make decisions and did you do things right, if you go, well, each independent director has all the knowledge on the company and it's in the data room and you can document it and they logged in. That is, I think, critical. I mean, you know, how can you be independent and make a decision if you had none of the information? Now I can prove it. Oops. Just, you know, best practices, getting the information, getting the discipline, and I think having a virtual data room is part of that discipline. 
Um, this is an area that is a little bit out of control in, in terms of abuse. The Section 220 request for C Corp, it is brutal when somebody gets really mad at your client and just says, I want document produ production. I, you know, I had a client, or I have a client, that we produced 7,000 pages of stuff, and we even took the deposition of the person and said, have you read any of it? No. We want another 5,000 pages or whatever. Are you going to read that? Well, probably not. Maybe when you produce everything, why do you want this? Um, put pressure on you. The judge took us aside and said we had to comply. And the reason is Delaware started throwing out cases. This is probably a good thing, but again, things have consequences. They started throwing out cases that they weren't specific enough, or they just said, hey, you committed fraud. No, Delaware said, you now need to be more specific. Well, the only way to get more specific is to get the information and to dig. So Delaware, in defense of Delaware, they're going to say, we want to scope out and call out the fraud, so we want an open system. If everything's in your virtual data room and you can manage it, this request becomes not as big a driver for hurting and Nick, if they want it, they'll have to get it and find it then, if you put everything there. If it's all there, now you can give it, and right. it doesn't take much effort. Puts a burden on them. Yeah, it, so. <clears throat> um, you know, this is just a warning. Um, a lot of the contracts with the big vendors, for example, they automatically renew the data room if you don't cancel it, but then if you cancel it, you don't have the data room. It's, you know, it's catch right too, but that's one reason why I would either want the client to have it or like a law firm or somebody has it, and you make a copy of it, you know, of, you know, of what you got. I've had, in the, you got the top 10 on one page thing that I gave, um, the sample disclaimer and some due diligence requests and some articles are all you know, on, the, on our website. Um, this, you know, internal review and use and just knowing who the team is, like, how, who are they, you know, okay? Who's the people that have it? Just getting that deal list without a deal will save you a lot of time. You don't want to spend the first two days just finding out how do you, con you know, where, who's got such and such mobile phone number? We need to, you know, all that stuff should be in here or somewhere in that data set. And pretty close to getting this back on time. I, I'm sorry, you know, rushed through it, but I think that this is something that I think would be good for everybody's practice. And you know, with, you know, we call it kind of a legal audit. It's getting all that material together, and that's how we're pitching it to the clients and saying, and, and it's a, it's not the easiest thing to sell because people are only want to do it when they have a deal. But this is part of just being ready in today's world. Questions? All right. Um, I think. Thank you.